Hey guys, Sidu here, and today we're going to be talking about communication with our fifth installment of See Do's and See Don'ts. Uh, first off, I'd like to apologize how long it took for me to uh, get this video out. I've been very, very busy, so I do apologize it took me so long, but I hope you guys do enjoy this video. Um, I really wanted to touch on communication because I think it's probably one of the more underrated aspects of Arena that people probably don't really take too much into consideration, uh, especially if you're playing with like a new team that maybe you're pugging with or um, players that you're not really too familiar playing with. Uh, this is something that's going to help you kind of build some team chemistry and help you guys definitely do better in Arena. So I want to touch on the things that you should be talking about as a healer and I want to touch on the things that you should be talking about as a DPS. Obviously, you could... Uh, uh, you can mix and match as you please, but there's kind of like underlying rules that I would say at like the higher level arena that it's basically your job as a DPS or your job as a healer to be talking about these things. And these things are really important, uh, important, uh, important. Sorry, I can't talk. So first thing I want to talk about as a healer is you should always be talking about defensive cooldowns, not only your cooldowns, but your partner's cooldowns. A lot of the things that I see is a very common problem with healers at lower ratings is they feel like they're only playing with their cooldowns and that's not really how the game plays out i would say nine out of ten times in most situations i always let my partners use their cooldowns first so they're going to use their trinkets they're going to use their cloak evasion uh you know ice block things like that um that's the way i really like the game to be played is they use their cds first and then i use my cds um in some situations that's going to change but generally generally speaking um the, the way I like that or the way the reason I like that is because it works out really well because most of the times when you want to use your CDs as a healer um, you're going to be CC'd so for you to trinket then use your CDs as opposed to them trinketing then using their CDs uh, it doesn't really make too much sense and also you can get punished really hard for using your CDs so um, when I when I say they use their cooldowns first I kind of mean like if they're being attacked so let's just say you're playing against jungle very common if you get full trapped and whatever is dying it's a death knight it's a rogue it's a mage they're going to use their cooldowns first uh, otherwise if you use your cooldowns first they could decide to swap to you and maybe kill you uh, and you won't have those to defend yourself so i like them using theirs and using yours and then hopefully the way it rotates is they'll have theirs back again giving you enough time to hopefully maybe win that game um if you're getting trained, obviously, you'll most likely need to use your cooldowns first. Let's say, you know, jungle's training you. You probably need to trink it early. You probably need a link. Then you got to let you know, you got to let uh, your DP, you got to let your DPS know that you're going to be in trouble. Um, you know, you're going to need that kind of help. So you want to make sure that you feel like you're playing not only your character, but every character. It's a really common mistake, uh, you know, especially with like paladins. They want to trink it. They want to get sack out. Just let your DPS use their cooldowns first if they're going to be attacked. But make sure you understand what cooldowns they have. If you're playing with a class you're not too fam uh, familiar with, just ask them. You know, Feral Druids have the wall. Death Knight, uh, Frost Death Knights have the IBF reset, things like that. Um, so it's pretty important that you feel like, you know, you, you have everything under your control. It's, it's definitely your job to kind of be rotating those cooldowns. Say, you know what, I'm in a full trap. You should use this. Uh, you know, when they don't have those cooldowns, you ask them constantly for updates. Do you have do you have cloak back? Do you have block back? Do you have uh, do you have evasion back? Whatever it is. Uh, do you have wall back? Do you have deterrence back? Whatever. I actually, aspect the turtle now. But it's your job to understand when they don't have those cooldowns, so you know how to react properly in that kind of moment. You don't ever want to be in a situation where you're just kind of sitting in a full polymorph and you say, "Can you use this?" And they say, "I don't have that." And then you're not able to, you know, immediately respond. So you want to make sure that you're always updated on how those cooldowns work. And constantly throughout the game, you always say, do you have this? Do you have that? Okay, I have this. I have that. Uh, you want to let them know. Um, so with that being said, you got to understand that if you guys don't have cooldowns, if your team doesn't have cooldowns, you or your teammates, you need to let them know when you're going to be in trouble, when you need to run, or when you're going to need to be uh, peeled for. So if you're playing against a team that's training you, if you have no cooldowns, say, you know what, next stun, I am going to die. I'm going to need peel. So that's going to trigger, you know, your DPS to save stuns, save DR, such as sheeps, um, you know, fears, whatever they need to. That way they're not using um, uh, in a time where it's not actually as good or things of that nature. Or if your DPS have no cooldowns, you know what? Uh, hey, do you have this cooldown? They say no. And you'd be like, you know what? I have nothing. It's time to get out of there. We need to come back. We need to retreat from this pillar. Uh, I've trinketed in 30 seconds. We could be aggressive in 30 seconds. These are things that you need to be communicating on the defense actively. Uh, offense is obviously very important, but you need to make sure that you're chiming in as a healer saying, you know what? I don't have these cooldowns. You don't have these cooldowns. It's time to, it's time to be careful for a little bit. Uh, stop some CC, you know, things like that. Uh, and then obviously on the other hand, 
On the other hand, if you guys do have cooldowns and you feel like you're getting a lot of pressure, feel free to communicate, you know what, we're safe here. We could push in, we can trade some cooldowns to maybe win this game or to play more aggressive. Uh, if you're fighting against a rogue mage and you feel like the next polymorph on you is going to be brutal and you have trinket for it, you know what, we're safe to push in here. You know, I'm going to trinket the next CC, I'm going to keep you guys aggressive, uh, so on and so forth. So it's really important that as a healer you're chiming in for the defense, for the offense, uh, things like that. Um, Against those heavy CC teams, if you ever feel like you need CC to be stopped, it's it's very, very important to say, you know what, uh, not even for the first CC, but for the follow-up CC, if you see a mage casting a polymorph on you, can you guys stop this next polymorph? No, they can't. All right, you're in the polymorph. Can you guys stop the follow-up uh, the follow -up polymorph? Can you guys prevent the priest from getting to me to a, for, uh, for a fear? Can you stop this druid from casting a cyclone off this polymorph? These are things that you should be communicating because every single bit of information that you're giving in Arena, it, it's just giving more knowledge to your team to understand more what's going on because sometimes you don't see everything. I don't care how good you are, there's going to be some things that uh, you're missing. Uh, I miss stuff all the time. Sometimes my DPS say it. Um, sometimes I say it that my DPS don't notice it. Um, and all of this is uh, really important. And uh, all of this is going to help you win games. Um, another thing that I found to be really important as a healer is sometimes, like, let's just say I'm healing my DPS and they're playing around here, all right, and I'm playing over here. And I decide to kind of relocate in the middle of the game. Maybe I take this position. Is constantly just keep your DPS updated. Say, hey, do you see me? Do you see where I'm at? You know, make sure you understand where I'm at. You don't want them to be in a position where they decide to line of sight you or they don't actually realize they're line of sighting you. Uh, also, if you're casting heals, just a simple, hey, don't LOS me. Sometimes DPS are playing right here and they'll slip behind the, peel, uh, the pillar not realizing you're casting a heal. Just simple communication. Hey, don't line of sight me. Um, because sometimes they can't they can't see where you're at. If you're if you're just training down this rest of shaman over here, you're going left and right. You can't you can't see the healer position all the way over here. It's just the way your camera works. No one's playing the game like this, you know. So just simple little updates, reminders for your DPS make their life a little bit easier. And I promise, the more you communicate in arena, the more like the better you're gonna do. And um, with your partners, and I feel like a lot of people these days they struggle to find groups. Uh, you know basically pugs to this group finder if you have excellent communication i swear even if you're the worst player in the world if you have great communication you are going to seem like a pro man i'm telling you uh people love communication if you run in and you're a 1500 rated rogue and you don't know what you're doing but you're communicating every step of the way i'm gonna sap this guy i'm going on this guy i'm gonna stun him i used evasion here i could be in trouble i have no cloak uh, things like this, your healer, it doesn't matter if you're not killing people, your healer is going to be like, holy crap, this is the best person I ever played with my entire life. He's saying every single thing. You know, if you set stuff up, like, I'm going to stun this guy. Can you CC him off of this? Like, these little things, they're going to add up. You know what I mean? And uh, I think it's going to really, really help people, you know, form these groups. And um, it's going to really help people form these groups and stick together as a team. And I think it's definitely going to help overall uh, for the, those pickup groups. So it's going to help out quite a bit. Um, the last thing that I want to uh, state out is just, you know, you want to make sure that your DPS know when big CDs are popped. Anytime a big cooldown is popped as a um, as a healer, you know, if someone uses Incarn, if someone uses Icy Veins, if someone uses True Shot, I make sure my DPS know so we can all react properly with the cooldown. You know what? True Shot's popped. Like, let's line a sight. Yo, Icy Veins is popped. We need that AMZ. Um, you know, here's Incarn. You know, use your shield wall. I need to ascend it. We need to stack up things like that. So you want your DPS to always uh, be very aware of uh, when these big cooldowns are being popped on them, so they they know when they should be taken care uh, and things like that. And then finally, as a healer, some things that I do notice is I try and always watch people's positioning. If people are playing a little bit over aggressive, and I know they have no trinkets. Maybe they're they're trying to attack me or they're overextending a little bit. I sometimes try and call a swap. Be like, hey, you know what? This guy's back here and he has no trinket. Can we do something about this? And then your team will maybe evaluate the situation and be like, you know what? Maybe there is something we can do about that. So as a healer, those are the things you want to be looking out for. Um, you definitely want to be communicating as much as possible. I'm, I'm telling you, it's 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 really big in arena. If you're just sitting back and you're just kind of like casually just healing people, and you're just gonna be like, "Wow, you just died." You know, what I'm saying you're you're gonna get that PS hero next, bro. You're just you're gone. But if you're saying, "Hey, man, like you're in so much trouble right now. I got no cooldowns. Do you have anything to react?" And they say no, and you say, "Hey, man, you got to get behind this pillar. We got to start line of sight until we get CDs back." And you're constantly, constantly communicating. Your partners are going to thank you, man. Your partners are going to thank you. Um, so obviously, those are some of the things that healers should be communicating. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what DPS should be communicating. Um, I'm not obviously as experienced as a DPS, but this is just coming from my experience as a healer and what I really like my DPS when they communicate. Um, 
So one thing that I really like when my DPS say is when they have CDs. I play with Mez, I play with Trill. I don't have AMS for 30. You know, are we safe here? I don't have IBF. Uh, so Chuck, you need to save me on the next big go. Trill saying, I don't have Karma, I don't have Wall. And then me saying, you know, I, you're safe, you're fine, I have you. I have cooldowns. Or me saying, you know what, I got nothing. We need to be careful. Those are those things that you guys should be communicating uh, back and forth. Now, one thing I want to talk about here is, uh, is a term that's probably been used for the last few expansions, and it's, uh, it's known as a go. You know, stomping goes, getting goes. Uh, a go is basically when you're doing your setup to try and work offensively uh, for Windwalker DK or goes or gripping someone on and stunning them and doing uh, uh, damage to two targets that are caught in that stun. For Rogue Mage, the goes are stunning this guy, stunning that guy, sheeping this guy, things like that. For Jungle, the goes are just stunning, trapping. So basically, go is the, the word that you're going to hear or get used to hearing to... Um, to what you need to do offensively or what you need to stop offensively and constantly as dps if you're playing a comp that's not like something really rotty like affliction warlock something like that if you're playing anything with cc you need to constantly be talking about when you can go if you play windwalker dk and you're the windwalker how long until you can go how long until you have grip uh, if you're the death knight you're talking to the windwalker yo how long are you stunned we need to go we need to go to get that offensive pressure same with jungle you know we need to go how long you're stunned how long you're trapped those are things that you need to be talking about non-stop and also on the flip side if you're on the defensive point of that and you're fighting a rogue mage or jungle we need to stop their next go we need to make sure that we break up this cc chain uh so it all kind of works in that nature you need to cc the windwalker on that go or cc the death knight on the go or you got to in cap or stun the hunter on those goes to stop the traps or kick the mage or stun the mage or cc the mage to stop these goes um this is a term that you need to really familiar, uh, familiarize yourself with in order to stop them in order to get them. So you need to understand also what your what your stops are. If you're a monk, you have in cap, you have stuns. If you're a class with interrupts, you have those interrupts. Or you could CC people with the CC. Uh, so it's all about stopping those goes, playing around those goes, getting those goes as quickly as possible. If you're not doing it as efficiently, you're just drawing the game out a little bit longer than you need to. You know, as a Windwalker DK, you want to use grip on cooldown. You want to do everything you can to get those goes. As Rogue Mage, every every time Polly's off DR, you want to go for those goes. Every single time you have Trap as a Hunter, you want to go for those goes. Um, so you just have to understand how to get them and how to stop them and what you can do to uh, to do those faster. So it's all about those communication, making sure that you, you know every single thing that's going on in your team. Um, because you could be the best individual player. But if you're not working as a team, you're just not going to be as structured and you're not going to play as, uh, as well. Uh, one of the things that you need to be talking about as a DPS, and this helps me sometimes, is sometimes there's position, uh, positions as a healer where I'm very afraid. I'm saying, you know what, guys, we're in a lot of trouble. And my DPS override me and they say, Chuck, we need to kill this second or we are going to lose this game. It doesn't matter how much trouble we're in. So if we run away right now, maybe we'll live another 30 seconds, a minute or two minutes. But we work to a position in this game where... Um, we finally have this window of opportunity to win and we need to be aggressive. So um, you guys as DPS need to understand what cooldowns you're getting. If you're playing against Paladins, you got to count their sacks. We got both sacks. We got both bops. There's no bubble. This is it. You know, we're, I know we're in trouble. We have to push. And if you end up losing, it's one of those things where you, you made that decision where you should be aggressive um, against priests. You know, no Rapture, no Archangel, things like that. Um, you know, rest of Drew's no skin, no trinket. You got to be aggressive. Those are things that you need to be looking out as a DPS, as a good DPS. Um, it's going to be one of the more difficult ones to call because obviously you're always going to know when you're in trouble. I have no cooldowns, but it's going to be more difficult to know when they're in trouble because it's a lot more difficult to actually track their cooldowns. So uh, maybe that's a little bit of a step up for DPS, but there's sometimes it's really important for me as a healer where I'm trying to be really conservative. I don't have much mana left and they're like, you know what, this is it. Pedal to the metal, start purging, throw out cap totems, try and go for hexes, get in their face, wind shear, stuff like that. So you have to play aggressive in this situation, use the rest of the mana you have and just kind of just go for it. Um, one thing that's very important for DPS, and this is one of the things that I think is going to definitely be a synergy thing, even though my team struggles with this, is always talk about interrupts. And at the start of the game, you should kind of talk about what is the prior, uh, the priority, <coughs> excuse me, the priority to interrupt as well as the priority to CC. So if you're fighting against a mage team, you know you need to stop those Evan bolts, the polymorphs against the warlocks. You got to stop the chaos bolts. Um, if you're fighting against a dis priest with multiple tiers or multiple trees. Uh, and someone kicks both shadow mend and um, or both people use kick on shadow mend then you start free casting the penance the clarities he's never going to die so you want to make sure that you're always talking about interrupts if you're playing a team with multiple interrupts um, hey i could stop this or i'm going to stop next or i'm going to stop the next blank um, 
you know, or I'll CC this on that, you know, I'll CC this image on the next polymorph. You got to be making sure you always talk about those stops because as soon as you over, uh, overlap one, it could spiral out of control and you kind of run out of those interrupts and those CCs pretty quickly. Um, so that's definitely pretty important. <clears throat> and, um, I think that's, that's pretty much it in terms of communication. Like I said, it's, it's one of those things that is probably very underrated, especially at a lower rating in terms of what you need to do. Um, or what you should even be communicating, but every little thing that you're looking at, let's say you're playing a rogue and you look down, my kidney shots, and you, you realize your kidney shots off cooldown 10 seconds, say it. I got this done in 10 seconds. You know, you look down as a healer, um, you know, Ascendance is on cooldown, Spirit Link's on cooldown. Hey, I have Ascendance in one minute and I have Spirit Link in a minute and a half. Uh, every single person on your team should always be talking about when their trinket is coming off cooldown or if they have trinket. Trinkets are really important for stopping those goes, which I was talking about. Um, I use Rogue Mage, Jungle, and things like that as an example of goes because those are probably the more go-related comps. Um, but yeah, so versus, let's just say, for example, Rogue Mage, I'm playing Windwalker DK. Uh, they go Trill, I know Trill's going to Trinket. Next go, if they go Trill really hard, I need to Trinket. You know, the go after that, hopefully Trill is Trinket again. So if they go mean, I don't have Trinket, Trill's going to Trinket, he's going to in-cap, he's going to use Fist of Fury. So it's all about... Uh, it's all about uh, you know, constantly rotating those cooldowns and understanding. You don't really want to overlap and overreact. You know, the first uh, the first polymorph or the first blind on Rogue Mage, it's this guy trinkets, this guy trinkets, this guy trinkets. You're probably just going to lose in the next setup, and you're going to be like, wow, Rogue Mage is really overpowered. So you want to make sure that you're not overlapping those trinkets. I would say for the most part, unless you're playing really aggressive, you only want one trinket per go. Uh, that's something that you guys should work on as a healer. You should work on that. If you trinket and they trinket, you just kind of understand. Be like, oh, wow, that was a mistake. Both of us shouldn't have done that. But yeah, uh, thank you guys very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it helps you guys a lot. I know a lot of people complain that it's really tough to find partners, but I promise you, if you are a very vocal player, people are going to think you're the best player in the world. You're going to be getting added on every single battle tag, everything. People are going to want to play with you. So really work on that communication. Work on talking about everything. Every little thing that you see or every little thing that you want to do, just do it, man. Talk about DRs. Talk about helping your teammates out. Like I said, uh, hey, can you crowd control off this? I'm going to kick this next. I have no defense defensive cooldowns am i safe here you know we have no defensive cooldowns we need to run you know what this guy's just got this cooldown up we're going to be in trouble here we need to use something things like that so you just gotta you gotta work on that a lot and uh thank you guys very much once again for watching and uh kick some butt